Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this out there on the World Wide Web. This is Jeremy Geelan for Syscon TV. I'm here at 10th Cloud Expo. In the background, we have it nice and quiet. Cloud Expo New York. I've managed in the quiet time to nab AJ Budraja. Thank you for joining us, AJ. Yes, sir. Thank I know you, you had your presentation earlier in this show, well received. And I just want to sort of quiz you, if I can, because there you are working in the government sector, so much going on in the cloud. Can you just share with our audience, AJ, what is you know, the general strategy for the government vis-a-vis -vis cloud? Catch us up on that. Well, as you know, there's different areas in the cloud. There's different models in the cloud. I think a lot of that depends on the data. You know, if the data is really sensitive, then we want to have a private cloud in place. If the data is something that can be out there, uh, then we have a public cloud. So there's different models in terms of how we want to have a cloud. Well, one thing I want to point out is that a lot of people just jump into cloud. The first thing to do is to look at what is the business requirement that the cloud is going to solve. And you know, I'm just saying this because there's a lot of excitement about the cloud out there and people just say, I just want to do cloud. But the basic thing is look at the business requirement. What's, what's the kind of solution that it's going to provide for them? You know, obviously we know the benefits. The benefit is time to market, less time to market, the cost aspect of that. Um, but, but kind of looking at the business requirements, looking at the data, looking at what applications are suitable for the cloud, that's another important aspect. Um, and that's why I suggest that a, a full kind of recommend, uh, rec I recommend a full assessment of all of that. Uh, assessing your existing um, portfolio, looking at the applications you want to move over to the cloud based on the data, the sensitivity of the data and related aspects. Um, and what I want to add to that is I think, you know, cloud, has a lot of features that people need to leverage, you know, and they're not leveraging all of them. Uh, the second aspect is, you know, there's um, standards that we should follow. You know, as a, from a strategic perspective, there's, it should be open in terms of how we develop everything. It, there should be standards that should be followed. Uh, there should be good governance in terms of policies and procedures. And obviously in, in, the, in the federal space, uh, security trumps everything. So from a security perspective, we want to make sure that uh, we have a provider that can meet the security controls, the security requirements. As you know, there's the FISMA, there's the FedRAMP, there's specific requirements from a security perspective that we have to meet. Um, and again, you know, from a security perspective, we want to know where the data is located. Um, that's a really important aspect. Uh, the second aspect is that we want to make sure that the, if the vendor, there's a problem with the vendor, how can we move on to a different vendor? So that's where we have to look at open interfaces, we have to look at standards, we have to look at the policies and procedures, and that's what's going to help us in terms of having a really secure environment uh, for the cloud. And you're in absolutely no doubt, I mean, this mandate, this cloud-first mandate, it, it, it's helping, of course, drive the rest of the industry, but there's been no looking back for the federal sector. Well, I think there's, it's, there's no looking back because um, a lot of times we are driven by mandates. And if there is a mandate, then that encourages everyone to go in that direction, move in that direction. And cloud first, I think, you know, when it came about as a mandate, that's when people said, let's jump on the bandwagon and move to the cloud. There, there's other mandates like, you know, shared services first. Uh, my, in my opinion, one of the aspects is to kind of, again, I'm getting back to assessing your requirements, looking at not just saying, I need cloud, but I need cloud for this particular situation. And that's where I think, you know, from my perspective, one has to do the assessment first and look at the technologies and have good practices in place for you, kind of look at that holistically, and then the next step is to leverage cloud as a deployment mechanism and use that. Now, I'll just give you an example. Um, cloud, I think, in the future is going to provide more capabilities that what's being done right now. You know, a lot of people are just using services here and there right now. I think there's going to be orchestration of services where people actually chain these services together and use that. That's, I think, something that's going to happen in the future. So that's, that's the vision that you see from, the, from a, a real world perspective, because you really are embedded in the real world cloud. Yes, I think, um, I'll just give you an example. So I think in the future, obviously we're using a lot of social networks these days. So what's going to happen is, uh, people go to a social network site. You know, from there they access a service. From from that point on, they move on to another service that's maybe a marketing service, 
uh, when I say service, it could be a marketing cloud mm -hmm. service. From there, they could go on to a reporting service. So this chaining of services or orchestration of services is something that's the wave of the future. That's something that's really going to happen. And, and, and the reason I mentioned that is because we want to make sure there's good integration between all these services and they can operate well. You know, there's two levels of that operation. One is a user, like if I access XYZ cloud, then I can go on to another cloud and I can move my data and I can leverage those services. And in addition, those cloud services have to talk to each other really well. So, so what I think is that that orchestration of services is the core of what people have to look at. And that is going to drive a lot of aspects like single sign-on. Um, so we have mandates like HSPD 12 in the government for single sign-on. Um, and, and what with, with the chaining of these services, that is going to drive uh, the orchestration. It is going to drive the security aspects because you have to kind of link all these services together and make sure they work in a seamless fashion and they can integrate well together. So that, I think, is the key. And a lot of people, you know, I call it the credit card mindset where people just say, here's my credit card and I buy a cloud. Now, that's not, not the right approach because you have to kind of integrate your on-premise applications with these external services. And that introduces a lot of aspects. There's um, how are you going to access those services uh, with it, that are within your firewall with those external services. You know, that introduces those aspects. There's security aspects. Uh, so you know, all of that has to be addressed when you, um, when you look at cloud and cloud services and when you look at orchestration of services. For sure. So there you are. Food for thought. Cloud food for cloud thought. From AJ Budraja, thank you so much for allowing me to kidnap you in this quiet time at Cloud Expo. And uh, thank you for following along out there on the World Wide Web. <laughs>